There we go. All right. Okay. Um, again, um, what we're just going to be kind of going over this morning is just the review of the W-2 submission and redesign um, between what districts would send and what ITC, if the IT is sending for the districts. Um, again, if you have questions that I didn't go over, please let me know. You can put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. Either way is fine. Um, I have Lori watching the chat box for me. So if you have a question, I'll just, she can just interrupt me and ask. So, and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing, what we're going to be going over is um, if a ITC, if your UFIT is still doing the submissions set or sending the files in for the districts, um, this is the steps that you're going to want to take for that. Um, the first thing would be um, to go to the um, your configuration, and then you want to go to W2 configuration, and then you want to make sure that this box is unchecked for your districts. And then you want to make sure all your company information is entered for or the for the districts. Um, again, we have um, for each field um, when you try to save it, if the right uh, fields are not entered correctly with the right data, we have a safe check on that, and it will send an error at the top here stating that you don't have the correct information entered and what field is wrong and um, how to correct it. Um, again. In our W-2, in our re, um, documentation, oh, let me go over here, I'm in system here. Again, we have this here for you. If you want to, if you can't figure it out um, by that, um, we do have that under here. Uh, what um, can't be blank, um, what your email has to be, et cetera. So again, we have that all here for you if you um, can't figure it out from the, error that it gives you. Um, again, if you can't go from there, then please contact us and we can help you get that figured out. Um, I know we are having some troubles with an ITC that had two districts that were just recently having issues with theirs, and that was a bug. Um, so I believe that is going to be corrected here shortly um, when they were trying to save, um, doing the submitter name address. A, it wasn't filling in and it kept on saying that it can't be blank. Um, so that was something that was just recent. So if you're having problems with that, that is going to be fixed. So for now, though, you just automatically, you can check that and then you just might have to copy that information from the company information down here. So I believe that's probably coming on the Friday's release. So uh, on that fix. So if your districts are having that problem, just for now, just tell them, fill that in and just manually and save it and you'll be fine. But after Friday, then they should be able to just check that box and the information should fill in automatically. Just a heads up on that one. So once you have all the information filled in, um, you can go ahead and click save. And then we're gonna go over here to reports and W2 report submission. So once your district has run the report, um, they can run the report with um, employees with errors only so they can figure out and it'd be easier just to go through that and figure out uh, what employees are showing with errors, um, fix those or if they don't need to be fixed. Um, and then they can go ahead and run that report um, to check everything else for your balance for your um, report totals and doing your double check. So once they have that all figured out and the report is good and ready to go, then they're gonna to wanna to move on to their submission. So here underneath the submission, um, again, you wanna make sure all your information is filled out. And again, if they're by with the red dot next to them, they have to be filled in or it will give you an error when you're trying to run the general submission file, generate the submission file. The next thing is um, you can enter in um, a contact fax or phone number if you like, but that's not required. And you wanna make sure your email address is entered for the district's email or who's running it. So then they wanna create the first file. So here you're gonna to wanna to create the, um, the SSA and they can create the CCA here, from here in the RITA. And when they create these submission files, it's gonna create a W2 tape file. So then what they're gonna to wanna to do with these W2 tape files is send those to you at the ITC 
And then you're going to file the instructions for the W-2 master tape file creation. And we have those instructions and we have them under um, in the wiki under our calendar and um, meeting that we have. And then you once you um, you go ahead and, and each district will send you the ones that are not creating their own files and sending them, then the districts, uh, you probably have something set up with your, um, your district stating how to submit it to you or an email. Um, so that gets to you and to let them know that they had created that and either they can pull it from um, the districts um, automatically or you can go in and grab it from, from the districts, these districts, or maybe they send it to you and then you copy it into a file folder that you have created. And then those will get appended um, when you run the W-2 tape, run pay W-2 tape. Okay. Um, and next thing on here, um, just the uh, XML. Now the XML would be what you at the ITC. Andrea. And this be, I'm sorry. Andrea. Yes. There was a, and if you could just put a comment in the, in the chat. And okay. it puts the, the file in the file archive uh, as well, right? That's what she was asking. Yes. Uh, when the submission file, yes. When you run the Correct. submission file, that is when that would go over into the archive. And again, I'll show you here. Um, if you have questions of what actually goes over to the file archive, we do have that out here for you. And it's very helpful. It's under utilities and file archive. And down here, we have what goes out to the payroll archive. And here shows all these report bundles. And down here, calendar year-end reports, and then also W-2 reporting. So here shows all those what files, where they will go, and when. So like W-2 submission created event, these that's when this triggers, and then those files get sent over. So hopefully that will help. Um, if you have questions on that file archive. Okay. okay good question. And this is a question. Okay. Um, on to the next. Uh, the XML again. Uh, this is what uh, the districts either um, either way, if the districts are creating their own files to be submit, they're doing this own submission files, they're still gonna have to send you the XML file because at this point uh, we do not have it where the districts can print their own. Um, W-2s at yet at this time. So um, again, you at the ITC probably have something set up with your districts to let to have them send the XML or send an email stating that they have ran um, the W-2 and they can go ahead and print those W-2s for you. So again, um, what, what your ITC has um, set up with your districts is fine. So once, and they just wanna make sure um, when they run that, make sure they include the fringe benefits and add which fringe benefits they want to show in the box 14. So that's just a reminder on that one. Okay. On to the next, the W-2 city options. Okay, so this one, um, we had a new option added down here at the bottom, custom city submission override. Um, actually, before I go any further, I forgot on the submission. Um, nope. That would be for the district. So, never mind on that. Yeah. There we go. Report. Sorry. It's under report. Okay. Here we go. One thing it doesn't list under submission, but it's under report. Um, on the report, uh, the new option that was added is down here at the bottom. So, if a district wants to run a report um, for each city to balance, to make sure that they're balancing with what maybe the city sends them a report, they can do this now by entering the tax entity code. And the only thing that they gotta make sure is in the payroll item configuration screen for that tax, for that city, is to make sure that entity code is used. So they would just need to know what their entity code is, they enter that in, and they can actually run a report that shows just for and, that city. Andrea, yes. Andrea yes. Uh, I got a, a message here. It says there's people that are waiting to get into the meeting. Oh, I don't sorry. I have a capability of letting them in. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Is everybody in? 
And then there's one more, another question under okay. chat, under the W2 reports, if you click on forms, you see that tax entity code, correct? That's what uh, Heidi had asked that question. Yes, it's still there. And I'm getting warm, so I gotta take off my shirt. The sweatshirt. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes, it is under there. So it's under uh, text or the city, but it's just not under submission. But I forgot that I did want to show that because that is new down there. So they can run a report. And like I said, I have an example here. Lori's joining. Okay. Looks like I don't know if Lori got in there or not. She says she's joining. Um, the next one um, on here, this is just an example of that W-2 report when I just ran it for the city code of 004. So I just want to show you what it looks like. Again, it's going to include those, the employee, if they have two cities that they're paying into, it's going to show those both. So just to let you know, but it's only showing those employees that pay into the 004. So um, again, they could pay into one or they might pay into a couple, but so again, you can see that, um, and you can balance if you need to balance and use this for balancing. Okay. I just wanna go over that. I forgot that I was at the bottom there. Sorry about that. Okay, next to the W2 city for ITCs. Um, a new option that was listed is down here at the bottom. It's called optional custom city submission override. Um, I guess some cities require um, different things in, diff in their files that they require. And I'm assuming um, either you with ITC or the districts had to change this before sending the file on. So now in redesign, they came up with this, that um, what they can automatically change in a file and they don't have to go in there and edit the file more. This will automatically do it for them. Andrea, yes. this is another question. They're asking, is that example of the forms options? Which one? ID and S. Um, is that example the forms options? I'm assuming you were just showing that example. This one here? That looks like the report, but. I didn't have one in the forms. Does so she, so she want a forms? Or the W2 city? I wasn't sure which. Is she wanting the forms? Yeah, I'm not quite sure which one she was talking about. Heidi? Yeah, and, know? Andrea, I'm yeah. sorry, you've, yes. you've gone back and forth between a couple of things pretty quickly. Okay, sorry about that. No, 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 that's okay. That's all right. That forms option, um, that's new this year. And I just wanted to make sure that's the one that districts can use to generate city um, PDF forms when they have to submit paper to cities. So if they have like five or 10 or 15, so they don't have to go through their entire file. I just, oh, correct. If, if you don't mind, if you have an example and you can show yeah. that, thanks so much, Andrea. Not a problem. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, I apologize for that because I did forget about that um, where you could select the city on its own now. So what I did here, what she was asking was on the forms, if you have to submit a paper form to your cities, now you can go into forms and enter in that tax entity code here in the bottom. So once you do that, like I have my W-2 report here for those, I have four employees, I believe. So I should have four paper copies for my employees that match. So then you can print these off on your printer there at the district, or there at, at the, the district or a UF ITC that can use that um, and send these in with a report to those cities. So yes. And a new thing on the forms that we added again was the year here at the top and the, the addresses and for the employee and the employers and the control number. I believe that wasn't on there last year. So I believe that was something new that they just added this year also. Andrea, thank you for showing that. I know another oh, option, not a problem. I know another option for that forms is if you have an employee that loses their W-2, mm -hmm. you could come in here and use that option minus the tax entity code and just print an individual or Correct. multiple. Ones. So yep. appreciate, yep. appreciate you showing that. Thank you so much. Not a problem. And yes, that is correct. Um, you can just select the employee here and just um, run it just for that employee. Okay. 
Very good questions. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the W-2 report option side of it? Okay. Um, on to the W-2 city. Um, again, this is just um, the generate the city submission um, that we have this new optional custom city submission override. And what this is for, again, is for the cities uh, might require different things in their file than other cities. And then they would, um, this would do the editing for them automatically when they create this file now. So what they want to do is go over to this um, utilities and then the W2 city override. And here under um, the override, this is where they can create um, per city if they need to, um, to um, update that file to what it should be. So again, what they can do is click on create, enter in the name of that file that they want to, um, maybe it's just one city that they need to update and enter a description. And then down here, they can add by clicking on the plus button. And these are the RS fields overrides that the cities require. So again, by the field name, we have four options here. And I'm gonna go back over to the one I already created because that'd be a little easier. All right, sorry, I have a few people that are waiting to come in. So I just wanna get those in here. Okay. So here's where you would, um, these override fields are located. So we have optional code fields um, that they can change. And each of these are, are on the file. And let me see, I got a file here. And so this is the files that they, what is going to be overridden. So the, the available RS fields that they can override for each of these um, line numbers here is they can enter a blank and also they can just copy that right into the field value here if they want. Um, the city name. So if they need to change the city, um, add the city name when they're running that file for that city, it's going to use the city name from the payee from the pay, pay city item configuration. If they need to add the state abbreviation, it will be the two character state code number. And again, that comes from the payee on this pay city item configuration. If they need to use the state full name for that city record, then they can, um, that will come from the payee assigned to that city time item configuration. If they need to change or add the tax entity code for that city that they're running, they can do that by adding the tax entity code and that is going to come from the payroll city item configuration screen. So again, there's quite a few different options they can use. And again, they probably have to work with their city and maybe they probably already know um, wh what cities require different things in their files. Andrea, is it possible yes. to have additional fields added to that? Um, I know there is one city that we ran into last year that the uh, code that indicates whether the person is an employee or a resident, um, the default is to go with what the IRS submission is, except unless it's a CCA or a RITA submission and CCA and RITA uses those fields. Uh, well, this other city wants to be able to use that truly as either the resident or the employee. Uh, so is that possible to override that field instead of everything coming through as a C? Let me, I'll have to ask our programmers on that because these were just ones that they, now it depends if it's in these, in these fields. And I have to look, where would the C, where are those located on the field? Because we might, I might have to ask if this is something that can be added to that. Because those are the four that they came up with that were used the most. So let me ask, 
I will make a note of that and see if that's something that can be added. And who was that who asked that? Uh, this is Mary at LACA. Okay. And um, Meta may run into the same thing because it was Columbus City that had requested that. Okay. Okay. And it looks like it's position 308. 308. Yeah, we don't have that on there. Okay. So 308. So that might be one that might need to be added also. Okay. So as of right now, these are only four that are actually available for changing. Um, yeah. So I will, I will talk to the programmers about that and I will send an email out with what, um, what they can do. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so, um, and then once you get those fields, um, I just went ahead and just added all four just for the, this test, just so you can see maybe what, you know, the different things that are showing on the file. And then over here is applies to. Um, you have four different or three different options. Um, so if you're creating like just for my O3, um, I'm creating it just for this city. Um, it only applies to this city. So when I run W2 city option and I put that um, tax entity code in, um, it's only going to run it um, for this one. And I select this combinate or select this option. Um, now the apply override value um, only to cities that are not selected. So what this one is, um, say you might have 20 districts, but one of them doesn't need that override. You can use this option and create it. And then when you run that W2 city report and select, and you have that tax entity entered and you select this option, it's going to select all those other cities and forget about the one that you actually have entered. So let me go back here. So let me, let me go back and forth a little bit. So if you have that one selected, the only thing to remember is you need to make sure you have the include amounts for all cities. So that option, you have to make sure those two go together because then you include all cities. And then what the system knows when you enter that tax entity code in, it says include all the cities but don't change the old, don't change this tax entity code, the old four. That city stays the same, but all the other ones we need to change and add that. So you don't have to create one for all of them. You can just exclude that one city and it will change the file. But again, these two go inside with each other. So you just wanna make sure that that is checked if you're using that option. And please, if you don't understand, please <laughs> just answer or ask some questions. That's fine. Um, the next one would be apply override value to all cities. So again, you can just create an override fi uh, file for all cities because all of them require this change. And you can do that for all. So you can just create a generic one with the name and description and and then you would just apply override value to all the cities. And again, right now we only have these four options to change. So we, I will definitely ask the programmers um, about, and if you, if, if you have other cities that require something that you're not seeing, um, please let us know and we can definitely let the programmers know and we can go from there. The next thing on here is to include the RO record. So on that RO record, what that is, is some cities are going to require things like, um, let's see here, would be your medical, federal medical savings, your adoption assistance, or your a designated raw 457B. So some districts wanna see that information on that file um, when you send that to them. So now we have that information, um, we can include it on their record or we don't have to. So when you were creating it for that city, if you just have this one city that requires it or it doesn't, now you can go ahead and include that automatically by just clicking include RO record. And what that does is it puts it on the file when you run it and it actually includes it right here, the RO. 
and it puts the amount from there and pulls it automatically into the file for you. And then it puts the second line, which is the RU record, and that's the total. So if you have more than one employee, it will do a total then. I just have one in my test account for now. But so each employee that has any of those three will show with an RO underneath their name, and then it's going to be a total of the RU record. So, and again, um, it will either be at the bottom, because again, my file is separated for um, non-Medicare and then Medicare. So if you have Medicare, non-Medicare employees, it's going to show them separated. And then they're going to um, show an RU record probably for the Medicare employees way at the bottom, if you have them. Okay, so that is what that include RO record is. Okay. All right, so once you find all those and you get them, you can go ahead and you can save that. And then we'll go back to the reports and back to W2 City. So now you can go ahead and start running your city files for um, the districts. And then I, I, the district will send these to you. You wanna go ahead, um, if you need, and then I can run. So again, if your cities still want to include, some cities want to include all the other city amounts that they pay into on the file, they have that option here. Now, if your city doesn't want any other cities on there, then just the employees that pay into their city for the 03 is my tax entity code, then you need to uncheck that. But again, if we're using that option under W2CD override to include all other cities except for this one, then you wanna still make sure that you include that. Um, then this box here includes city name for the processing city only. Again, um, you have the option, if they wanna include the city name on the file only, they can do that. And I have an example here, I believe. Yeah, so what it do, does is just includes the city name that you're processing. And that is in 338. All right, any questions on the city submission part of this one, since this is kind of new or any questions on that? Otherwise, okay. All right, um, the next thing to move on to, we're going to go on to the running of the state files. Now, again, this is not going to pertain to everybody since not everybody has um, a surrounding state that employees are from. All right, so the first one would be probably your Ohio file. And again, you wanna make sure that they enter in the name, phone number, and email address and they create the submission file. And then that, what that does is create the W2 tape text file. And then that will be sent to you again with your procedures of how to get the file to you or if you go in and grab it from um, their directory. And then you would add that to the append file for Ohio and to create that W2 master file in classic. So that way they can, you can send that to the state of Ohio. So the next one would be your Indiana. So for your districts that are in Indiana, um, the other thing that is just a little different is that they require the, Indi um, the taxpayer ID. So they would have a taxpayer ID number for that Indiana submission file, and then also the three digits for the TID location. And then once I create that W-2 tape for Indiana, again, that would be sent to you to be included um, in that run W-2 tape to create the W-2 master file that needs, and then that would be sent um, to um, Indiana. Same goes for Kentucky. Um, this one, they're just requiring the name and phone number in their email address. For the Michigan, um, for the same, for your districts that are, have Michigan employees, um, it will create the W-2 tape um, text file. 
and then that would be sent to you to create uh, the W-2 master among all your other Michigan files set from your districts. If you have West Virginia employees, again, you have your contact name, phone number, email address, and this one's a little different. For West Virginia, um, your district's probably already been keeping track of their first quarter tax, second, third, and fourth. And they want to know that on the tax, on the file, submission file. So they would need to um, enter those figures in and then add a total. And then go ahead and generate that W-2 submission file. And then they would send that to you. And then to create one master file with all your West Virginia employees, our districts. On to the Pennsylvania. Now, if you have Pennsylvania, employees within your districts. Down here at the bottom, you have, they will create the submission file. But then also there's another one that um, Pennsylvania is the only one and that creates a CSV transmittal file. And what they need to do, either this is sent by you at the ITC, the, you know, they'll send it, the districts will send it to you and then maybe you send it onto them or maybe the districts, you have it set up where the districts automatically send that to them um, through the Pennsylvania site. So again, it just depends how um, you at the ITC have that set up with your districts. But again, they have to run both and they have to make sure that they submit that. Any questions on the W-2 state for ITC submission? Okay. Andrea, I got one. Yes, sure. For the PA submission, is the tape in the format required for the district to send it, or does the ITC have to run it through the W-2 master? That's what we're going to go in next. So again, you you at the ITC probably have this ready set up with your districts. If they're if you're allowing them to actually create the the master tape files for your districts. Um, so the next thing is what we're going to be going over for if districts are, are creating their own files and submitting them to the states or to the IRS. Um, this first part was just if you at the ITC um, is not allowing your districts to do this at this point yet, maybe. Um, but if you are, then that would be the next step that we're going to be going into. Correct. But this no. part is right. This part is just for ITC to get the w2 tape.txt files to, yeah, and then I, think that, you're in, I think you're misunderstanding me oh i'm sorry I, that's okay the itc is submitting for everybody they don't have um, the config set for the district to send it themselves correct so in that instance for the pa tape would the itc have to run it through w2 master that's what i'm that asking. is correct all right thank you you're welcome yes because as of right now, it's not in the correct W-2 master state, how it's going to, you know, when you run it through that append file, which we have here, and we have that out on our wiki, um, and then we have where you can do a checklist here, and then it just uh, gives you um, the directions of, of what you have to do on that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And that would be P, actually, right here in that file, when you're, when you're in W-2 tape. So that would go for all of your states because they have to go into that creation of the W-2 tape and then that gives them the correct format in order to send to the states. So sorry about that, I misunderstood you there. Okay, any other questions on the I, if IT, ITC is creating the file and then appending them? So the next thing we'll do then is if a district is creating the files and doing their own submissions. And what we wanna do is go to configuration under systems, back down to W2. So your districts are gonna to wanna to make sure they have this selected. So now they can create their own files and it's all in the right format and ready to be sent to the federal, uh, state, CCA, um, et cetera. So 
Um, it does eliminate a step for you at the ITC that you don't have to append these files anymore. So um, I think it's very hopeful that the districts can actually do this on their own now and it does a, a, um, remove a step for you guys. So again, you gotta make sure you have all your submitter information correct in here and click save. So now we're going to be going back over to W2 report submission and starting over. And again, the, w, the districts can run their report and run it by report employees only to make sure and correct all the employees that have errors first. Um, and then when they're ready to for their final report, they can go ahead and include all their fringe benefits that they need to by adding it by the drop down box here and make sure they're clicking on add. And again, um, if you have more, maybe more than you have eight or nine listed down here, um, again, if those employees have seven of those, only the first three is going to um, be listed. And I think believe it's always going to be if they have a lease vehicle and then also if they have COVID, um, those would definitely be listed in that box. Okay. And again, they can run that tax entity code and generate reports to make sure um, and balance each of their cities. Andrea, you have a question in the chat. Uh, do these black 14 selections hold as defaults once you enter them in? No. Okay, say that again, I'm sorry. Do the, the black 14 selections hold as defaults once you enter them in? And I believe the answer to that would be no. I don't think they do. Like if you, if you went in and you selected six different, they they might. I'm I can't, I'm not sure on that, Andrew. Um, they may while you're if while you're still in the screen. Are you saying like if you go out of the screen and go back, would they be retained? Is that what the question you're asking? Yeah, here I unmuted. Uh, you know how like on the SERS report, the the OTH holds there, the BWK, that kind of a yeah. thing where it it holds we we did have an issue last year with uh printing where we grabbed the wrong file from the file archive gotcha. because one we grabbed the file that didn't have the box 14s on them and one file did have the box 14 codes on them because like i think they maybe they did you do have to enter them each time i'm thinking you do let yeah, me Andrew, just just Andrew, just go to home now and then yeah that's what i was going to do i was just going to see if that was going to work so let's i don't i don't think they they retain it they it re, get, retains them nope no it doesn't okay. yeah you, okay. that, is, that is a good uh thing we could definitely maybe ask for an improvement on yes you know once you collect yeah. them okay. and have them default stay yeah definitely yeah. So as of right in. there, so yeah, definitely okay. have to make sure that you remember if you're going in and out of this um, report option here, going back and forth, you have to make sure that you re-add these back in because they do get removed. But again, like Andrew said, uh, that would be a good enhancement. So, and we might have that as a feedback, but we'll go ahead and double check. I'll look, I'll look. Okay, yeah, I'll put okay. All right, thanks, Lori. Yeah. Okay. So on to the next. So again, now um, the submission file. Now the districts, um, like I said before, now when they create the file, it's already in that, w, it will create the W2 master file. And like I said, the difference between when an ITC is creating it and when a district is creating it, um, they have to run it through the append file and they has to, um, it has to actually be created, that master, uh, W2 master file. So um, again, this will eliminate a little bit of work for you guys um, if the districts are allowed to do this. And again, now they have that option. So when they do create that W2 submission file, I'll just go ahead and run it for you so you can see it. It's W2 mass automatically. And that's the file that has to be sent to the SSA. Over here, it's a big file. So here's my test file. And again, what it does is adds that RA record. And that's what's missing from that when the ITCs run it for the districts, when they have to append it. 
And then way at the bottom, RF. So those are the two things that are gonna be different between your W2 tape and your W2 master. Okay. Um, the other thing that the, uh, the districts can run is the submission file. Now, again, um, we have this as a feedback or it actually could be a JIRA issue that we have requests from ITCs that are wanting just the file to show like maybe CCA. They just wanna see the CCA employees, that's it. As of right now, I believe when you run that, it, it's going to show the same as this one. I don't think, Lori, is that true? I believe that, that they don't have those separated yet. And I believe that is a feedback issue. I'm sorry, I was a little bit oh, okay. I don't have a CCA. <laughs> On the CCA submission file reports, I believe mm -hmm. that is a juror issue that we are, um, where district or ITCs or districts want that submission file to show just CCA employees or just RITA employees. Because I don't think those are separated out yet. Yeah, it shows the exact same amount. Yeah. So for RITA and CCA as of now, and if you want that, please send us an email or a ticket and we can up their request for that because I, have, I, I think we, um, that would be very helpful for districts for that. But as of right now, they don't have that separated out. So the submission files, those are, they're, they're gonna be the same. They don't have them um, just for CCA or just for RITA at the, this point. So, okay. So again, um, they wanna create the W2 submission for the RITA and their CCA. And again, that goes directly into a W2 master file. And then they can take this file and send it directly to um, CCA, the district themselves and directly to RITA. So they would just have to go into CCA website and send that in and the same goes for the RITA website. Okay, any questions on this part of the W2 report? Okay, and again, like I said before, um, as of now, even though the district's creating their own submission files, the W2 master files, um, they still have to create the XML and still send it to you to do the printing and edge. Um, as of right now. So hopefully maybe next year, um, that option will be out there that the districts can print their own W-2s if the, uh, you at the ITC um, lets them do that. So again, it's up to the ITC on their procedures. Okay. Okay, W-2 city options. Again, they would wanna make sure that their W-2 city is um, overrides or all set up before they start running this. And then down here, they actually can run um, a city submission file just for that district, if they're just, in, or that I, um, city. So I can create one here or a submission file just for my one text entity code if I need to. And then that is, tells you how many are processed and each of the wages, gives you a little breakdown. So if they need to send this with um, anything or send it to the cities, they have that now that they can do that little report. So each city has that, just not the reading CCA at this point. And again, if they want, I don't know, let me see if I include all cities. I don't know if it will include everything or if it will just include that one. Oh, it just includes that one. So. Submission file will only be what you're running the text and duty code for. So, but when you generate the city submission file, again, if you have these included, it's gonna include all your uh, amounts for your cities. And again, it's gonna include all your city names for processing. So if I'm gonna run that, I'll go ahead and run it for 003, generate my submission file. All right, here we go, bring that over. So now again, like I said, now it's ready in the correct format, which needs to be sent um, directly to that city. It doesn't need to be uh, appended because uh, um, that's what this does, automatically does um, 
by letting the districts um, create the files. Um, one thing I did wanna show, since I included that optional, um, if I, I added inbox um, 195 to 196, I added the OH to the file, this is where that's going to show. Either it's since um, if I didn't have that in that W2 city override, um, this is where it would be blank. But since I added it, now it's in the file. And again, goes for the line 331. I added an OH, Ohio abbreviation, because my city required that. And then the next one would have been the 338. The city wants to see uh, the name of the city actually in the file. So that's where that would print from that W2 city override. And then the last one of those four options is the full state um, name spelled out. And that would have been the last one, which is your line 413. So that is where those would print if you're adding that W2 city optional. And I included all four so that way you could see where all these are printing on the file, what is being added. Now, again, like uh, your city may not need all those changes, so it'd be just one of the four. So then this file is ready to be sent to the city. Um, probably have a website that they go ahead and submit that city file to. Okay. Any questions on the W2 city for the districts to submit? And again, they would have to do this for every city. So they just gotta remember if they have 12 different cities that they have to report, they have to do run this file every time and enter in the, um, each text and code. Hey, Andrea. Yes. Uh, there's a, a, somebody had a question. Could you just go over, review over the particulars of the options for city filing with yes. that in correlation with those override areas? Just kind of go back over those override areas and. Yeah, just kind of go through that again. Okay, so let me bring up a file here so we can see it according to what changes we're doing. I think that would be helpful. Okay, here we go. So this is the W2 city file that I created. When I selected that city override and W2 report underneath on, or on that box down below, um, what this is doing is chain, adding fields that maybe a city is requiring. And as of right now, we have four different options, um, field names that you can change. Um, again, if there is more that need to be changed, let us know and we can send that on to the programmers. Um, the field names show available is these, what we have as of right now. Now, I believe there probably is more um, different um, different field values that can be used, but we would have to ask the programmers because I don't know if they created just these for now or if there's more and these were just the most requested to be used. Um, so again, if you have different field names that need to be changed and, and, these, and these actually field names, if they have to, if they're changing these, then you're fine. But if you have different spots, like we said in, in line three, 308, um, I don't believe we have that set up. So, but if something else, they're requiring a different field value in that, what we don't have listed, let us know and we can ask the programmers and that might be already set up. They just, we just don't have those listed because these were just the most requested at the time. Um, so what that is, so if I, I added an optional code 195 to 196. So my city said, I want the state abbreviation in that file. So go ahead and add that in. So that's what I did here. And that's exactly what added here. And that's what this overrides. So it's say when I created that, it's automatically throwing the OH in that line 195 and 196 for each of my employees for that city. So like for 331, I said, I want the state control number and I need to have the state abbreviation number, name in there or the, the state abbreviation of the state because that's what my ITC wanted, or my district, or excuse me, my city wanted. So 
So we go over here. And then this is where that 331 is putting that Ohio in. So this is what that field is right here is adding. Again, you can add um, the full name of the your the city name. You can add the state or state full name in there. Again, it's just I'm just doing a test, so I'm not certain what your cities require in your file. Um, but just letting you know that that's where that that is being added in the file. Now, if you did none of these, then all of these spots would be blank. Um, the next one is the 338, and that is right here. That is what this does. It adds that city tax entity code um, of, it overwrites, excuse me, overwrites that city that you have selected. And what that 338 is, city name, it pulls from the payee signed to the sit, payroll city item configuration. So that's where it's getting that city name from. Okay. And then last one of the four option is line 413. And then that's way over here at the end. So what I said, my four, you have 413, 40. So you have quite a, um, a few spaces in there that you can add. Um, my city requires the, the state full name to be in there. But again, it could be, maybe it needs the uh, tax entity code to be in that 413, or maybe the city name needs to be in that 413. Again, you can use any of those. Um, I think the 195, 196, I mean, that's only two spots. So again, I believe it, it's only gonna be your state abbreviation. I don't believe you can't enter anything else in there because that it only allows two spots. Um, is there anything else that you wanted me to go over on that, um, the city override for W-2 that you wanted to see or had a question? Andrew, go back to the W-2 report and then go to the city and then kind of explain again, like, like if they're entering the, the city entity code and they have an override set up, then they're going to be using that override. Just go ahead and show them that again one more time. Okay. So back then over to the W2 report and W2 city option. Now I created, and here is my optional city that I created, and that's my custom city submission override. So I want to select that. So once you running, select- You're running that, this for tax entity code 003, and that's, that's why you selected the override, correct? Correct, correct. So it's only for the city override that I'm created, created and selecting. So if I'm, I'm running for text entity code 004, then I would not select that. That would be blank. Yeah. Because that, my 004 city does not have a city override. Their file is just normal. Andrea, what's the correlation between the override and the include amounts for all cities and include city name for processing. Is there any correlation for the overrides to those options? Yes, that was the one where I stated um, on the text the W two city override. If you're so if you're using the apply override value to the cities that are not selected, that is where you need to. I'm just going to have two screens here. It'll be easier. There we go. So we can go back and forth a little bit easier. Okay. So if you in your in your file for WC CD overwrite are using this applies to, this is the one where you have to make sure you have the include amounts for all cities. Because what it's stating, you're applying this override value only to cities that are not selected in the tax entity code. So if you're saying I need to override all 20 cities except for one, then this is what you're, um, why you're needing to select the include amounts for all cities. And then it will include every city. If I have that in my optional submission override, 
then I would need to make sure this is um, selected. And that's include the amounts for all those cities, but I don't want it to be included on my tax entity code 003. So all my other cities require this change, but this one here does not. And that's why this box has to be checked if we're using that option here. Okay, looking on the documentation for the um, for the city submission, under where that field value states, uh, if you select that, include amounts for all cities, yes. there is no reference. There's no reference there that you may need an override in the, so I, if I may make that suggestion, that that okay. be added to the document that you need may need to do that. Okay, I did add that into the W2 city override documentation, but I will add that also um, in the W2. Right, because a lot of our districts reference that W-2 report documentation okay. under the city submission. If it says include all, we may not want to make a reference to cross over to that other, maybe even include that link sure. um, there as well. I do have another question Okay, for the future, um, because we are, and Mary mentioned it, and I appreciate her doing that. We do have a lot of ITCs that cross over cities. Is there a way that we can create something under the appendix um, for the future that we can have a reference that, hey, if you use this city, this is how this setup should be for 2021. Can we start like a database of what these should be set up um, to, to save everybody some grief? <laughs> so in here, you want to be able to have a list. The is, I guess the thing is we wouldn't have uh, we'd have to get that information from you at yeah. the IGC. Exactly. Have, no, no, no. We have yeah, nothing. Complete, yeah, yeah, completely understand that. Let's let's bring up yeah. um, Mary brought up of the um, city of Columbus. Right, right. You know, they want yeah. that. They want that resident or uh, employed. Yeah. Right. I mean, so if yeah. if we got information, I think we could definitely create like a something in the appendix. You know, with screenshots of like, okay, right. Columbus right. City. You know, and then that way, at least you have it to reference. That would be a, that's a really good point. I may okay. bring that up at the um, steering committee. Maybe we can get yeah. um, ITCs collectively to, as they come in, document them, send them off to you folks. And maybe we can start like a document and just list cities that everybody can reference back. Because I'm going to be quite frank. If this is blowing some of our minds, this is going to blow our district's minds. So Definitely. I just think we need to have, I think we need to have something to, to make this manageable. And a real other quick question, how is this being handled in classic? It's I mean, classic's it not gonna have these options. It's not, no, no, it's I think, not. I think they manually went in and changed it from what I understood, but I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not yeah, certain how, not. how the ITCs or the districts uh, change that information on their files. So if they're mm -hmm. accepting classic files, now this is me being devil's advocate. You know where I'm going with this, right? Uh -huh. okay. I know where you're going. <laughs> All right. Just, just checking. So I appreciate yep. that. So any ITCs that are on the call, maybe we can collectively start a format of how to start doing these if we come across these and what information should be included just as a great reference for our district. So just a suggestion. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions on this W2 city override? It is a lot to comprehend. Um, again, we have the documentation out there, which I will make sure I update the W2 report part of it to include the W2 city override um, or the URL so they can go here in um, the districts if they have questions. Okay. All right. Um, if no other questions on the W-2 city options, um, we'll go ahead and move on to the W-2 state, which is our, oh wait, which we already did, but for the ITC. Now, if you're doing the district, um, you have your two options again to create the Ohio W-2 submission file, which is your W-2 MAST. And then that is already in the correct format for them to automatically send to Ohio.
And I also will create the submission file and that will show just the, um, it should show the amounts for the um, who paid into Ohio, the totals. So here's the W2 mass file. And again, this file was already for the districts to send automatically or to uh, their state of Ohio, because it has all the correct headers in the file already. And it's called W2 mass underscore Ohio. And then the W2 Ohio submission. And then you can, um, it has Ohio submission file. To open there. So again, that goes for your Indiana, Kentucky and Michigan, West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Only difference is from ITC to district is that it already creates that W2 mass file. Um, so it looks exactly the same except it adds those two extra um, fields in the file for you. Your RA and then way at the bottom, I believe it's the RF record, excuse me. RW. Yeah. Every time I do that, it moves. There, RF, there we go. So the W2 state, um, pretty much the same run for your districts. Okay, um, is there any questions that you wanna go over? Um, I know that a lot of, like I said, a lot of change with that W2 city override anything that would be helpful. I tried to hit uh, the most what I thought we could, um, what would be helpful to you guys um, on, on what uh, would need it for this new coming year for, for running submission. Lori, is there anything else that you can think of that might be helpful? No, I don't think so. And like I, I was saying, like Heidi had said, I think that would be a really, really good idea as far as those large cities that, that um, have specific things they want on their files. Definitely would be a good idea that we could try to get some sort, sort of a document. That way the ITCs at least have access to it. And um, yeah, I, this the uh, districts... <laughs> They may they are probably going to need some help from the ITCs, yes. and maybe the ITCs will actually just do it for them because it might be a little bit too overwhelming for them. But yeah, I I, I totally agree with uh, what she said, and and I think it would be really helpful. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Lori. Um, again, any questions that you want to review? And you have any um, personal questions about, you know, your if you have a, a certain state or something that you can email us about too. So that's fine, or create a ticket. Okay. Um, are there any, just quick before we go, are there any more releases uh, for the W-2s in order to print them, submit them, or are all the, are the version that we're currently on good enough for all that? I think the only thing that, uh, like I said, mentioned earlier is if they have that issue with uh, the bug in the um, configuration, if your district is having uh -oh. that problem. Um, yeah. But again, that, that right. you, can, think, you can fix that though, because you can just go ahead and enter yeah. that in. So I think that I think that's coming out next Friday. Yeah, that and that's coming out next Friday. But you can get around that by just uh, manually entering that in. But as far yeah. as we know, there is nothing else except uh, that ODGFS, uh, I believe that went out today. No, that's going out next Friday, too. Is it next Friday? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you know what? That was released, I think, for Classic. Wasn't that was it? Classic, yeah. Yeah, that sorry. Was that was Classic, yep. 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 So the but other one will be included. You know, I think the printing of W-2s, like you had said, I believe that's on the roadmap for next next year. So next year, by next year, the district should be able to print their own W-2s out yep. with the program. So, yeah. And again, um, 
just so they know just they can use that file archive to show exactly where things are going in the file archive too. So if they have any what is what is going to be printed and where where is it going to go. So it's very helpful. Okay, then I think that concludes. Yes. I guess Sorry. one other thing Andrea, is just yeah. to make sure if the ITC, and I know that they already know this, but just kind of a reminder, if you are, are submitting your W2 information for your uh, district, if you are having them send them to you by email, make sure it's done securely. Not, yes. you know, <laughs> because we don't want any uh, IDs or uh, social security numbers getting leaked out, but that was just a, just a helpful reminder. Thanks, Lori. Yep. Okay, then I think that's all for now. Um, good luck on your printing and W2 calendar your end with your districts and have a great weekend. Thank you. <laughs>